Uh, my name is Joshua Walters from South Bend and I drive a 2022 Tesla Model Y. Well, this is actually our third uh, EV and initially it was definitely a money savings thing. Um, I drive about 60 miles a day. Uh, and so I spend in $200 a month in gas and this dropped it down to about 60 in electric. So that was a uh, considerable savings. Um, and after kind of trying it, you know, we really just uh, enjoyed uh, a lot of the features on electric vehicles. You know, they're very easy to drive. They're uh, quiet and, um, you know, you can preheat them in the winter, which is always nice. Uh, so um, when it kind of came time to get another car, uh, we just wanted to get something that was long range and had a good charging network and that Tesla kind of fit the bill for that. Yeah, so in town, I primarily charge at home. Um, and then thankfully, because it is longer range, uh, you can usually do a, a shorter trip, round trip. But if you're out and about, um, there's certainly chargers just about everywhere now, um, both fast chargers and chargers at your destination. Um, I recently did a drive down to Louisville, uh, had to stop just once each direction and then charged at the hotel too. Um, and that was just a very easy drive. Uh, not really any, any different than driving a gas car down to Louisville. Well, I'm coming up on two years with it and uh, I've not done anything other than rotate tires. Um, you know, really between the regenerative braking, you don't have to worry about brakes too often. Obviously there's no oil changes. Um, so you're really just looking at, you know, your basic consumables, tires, windshield wipers, windshield wiper fluid. Um, so it's very easy to maintain. It, it uh, does not require much cost to maintain. So uh, the range on the Model Y is about 300 miles. Uh, and my previous vehicle was a BMW i3, which is electric and had a range more around 70 miles. So this is our only vehicle right now. Um, previously, we did have two vehicles and they were both electric. We went out to, uh, it was west of Peoria, Illinois, um, just a couple months after we got this car. Uh, to pick up our new puppy and um, that worked out really well because you know he needed to stop a few times too so we just timed that with the charging and it probably really didn't take us any longer because we had to stop with him anyways so it was it was a good trip well you know you get the jokes and things like that sometimes but uh, I think over time it's been helpful for people to kind of know somebody who has one um, and certainly, you know, as, as people have familiarized themselves with it more, uh, people are kind of talking about, you know, getting their own eventually. Um, my brother and his wife did eventually uh, get a Model Y as well. Um, and they're talking about replacing their second car uh, with one of the Volvo EVs. Um, so, you know, it, it, like anything new, people are always skeptical. Uh, but uh, just having that exposure really kind of shows um, that not only is it not really any different than any other car, um, but there's a lot of benefits uh, and, and everybody is always impressed by saving money too. So that helps. Um, well, I think the biggest thing is if the city could somehow work with and try to get some fast chargers within city limits for South Bend. Um, there's a couple in Mishawaka but right now there are not any fast chargers within South Bend. And obviously we have a pretty big tourist population with Notre Dame and things like that. So it doesn't really make sense that we don't have that here. Um, for residents themselves, uh, you know, most people end up charging at home. So charging infrastructure around town is nice and it can be great for local businesses and things like that to have that uh, nearby and, and attract people who want to charge. But really for residents, um, home charging is what matters. And so maybe also working with, uh, you know, apartment buildings and apartment complexes to get charging infrastructure installed near there. So that way it's extended to people who don't necessarily have a garage or a single family home to plug into. My favorite part about my car and my previous EVs has been preheating in the winter, you know, uh, 
obviously some gas cars have remote start or whatever, but um, with EVs, it's really pretty much a standard feature and you can do it safely in the garage. You don't have to, you know, worry about suffocating yourself or anything like that if you leave it running too long. Um, and then a lot of them can even just be scheduled because it's safe. You know, you can put it on a timer and it'll just start and be warm when you get up and, and go out in the morning. So with our uh, chilly winters, that's definitely very nice. Don't be afraid of range. Uh, you know, if you can cover your daily commute maybe twice over, you should be fine um, for your daily driving. Uh, that gives you a little bit of a buffer and things like that. Uh, and then, you know, really just figure out charging before you make your purchase. Um, you can charge with a regular wall outlet. That's fine if you don't drive, but you know, 30 or 40 miles a day, that'll cover you. Uh, but definitely make sure you have that figured out beforehand. Um, and, you know, look into the various incentives and things like that. There's a, a lot of good tax credits for both installing charging equipment, as well as purchasing vehicles. There's rebates from AEP. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be an expensive thing. It's not necessarily limited to, to more luxury cars either. Um, you know, used EVs now can be had for less than $15,000. There's good tax credits on those too. You can really get away with maybe even saving money over a comparable gas car, uh, even on the purchase, not just on fuel.